Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Uche and today I have a wonderful guest with me. He will be introducing himself so you guys will get to know him. He's not a YouTuber but he will be reading your comments as well. So in case if you have any comments you can leave it in the comments section. So welcome. Thank you for accepting to come to my channel to assist everyone that you know people have been hearing about Australia immigration and some of them don't know where to start from. So I appreciate you coming today to answer all their questions. Uh, can you please introduce yourself so people will know who you are? Um, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Uh, to everyone listening and watching, uh, my name is Ayotunde, um, popularly called um, ATM. And um, I'm, I currently live in Australia. I live in Adelaide, uh, Australia, and I've been here for over four years now. And uh, prior to that, I was working in Nigeria. Of course, I moved straight, straight from Nigeria to Adelaide on a skilled visa. So, and I'm a permanent resident, so looking to become a citizen very soon. So, um, yeah, I think that's uh, basically me. He's the best blog that you need to know too. So welcome. <laughs> um, a lot of people want to come to Australia, but they don't know how to start the process can you please give us the lowdown how you can let's say i don't know anything like we are watching us now and i want to start my journey to become a skilled worker in australia how can i do that okay so i'll start with the background so um i've i've been doing this for over four years um because i tried to do the process myself when i was moving to australia when i was going to move to australia and i because of that, I have to do a lot of research and trying to understand the process. And I've been doing this, trying to help people in different uh, category, all over different social media platforms. I've had so many testimonies of people moving to Australia. So to start, um, everyone will say it's a very difficult process, but it just requires time and do which is what most people don't have. But if you are making a long lifelong decision like this, you need to also create time for this. So the first thing you need to do is to identify the occupation that you can nominate. So there are so many, the process, of course, compared to Canada, or for example, or UK, may not be as straightforward. Uh, but if you take your time to read through some of this information, you're able to understand the process. So what you need to do is identify the occupation that you can nominate. This could be maybe your qualification or based on your experience or based on what you do or what you've done in the past. So you need to weigh those options. And sometimes it's not about what you currently do. It could be something that relates to what you currently do that can get you in instead of what you do. Because whatever you do when you land in Australia, as long as it is legal, you have document to prove what you are doing or what you've done before. Whatever you do when you land does not matter. So to start, the first thing is identify your occupation. Then you now go through the website as a same body for the occupation to understand their requirements. This will give you an opinion or gives, gives you an idea that, oh, I think I can meet this requirement or I cannot. Then you start considering your options of the type of visa you want to go for and stuff like that. But the first thing that you need to know is to identify the occupation to nominate. And you can do that by visiting the, the Anzo search website, or I'm sure she'll, she'll put that on the screen. And sure, you I will. I'll Anzo put it on the website. Yeah, they will have all, up to 500 occupations that you can nominate from. But so there are intricacies, intricacies to some of this requirement as well. So sometimes they require that you have at least um, three years experience. Some require that you need at least one year experience. Some don't need, uh, need you to have experience as long as you have the qualification. And sometimes some occupation or some assessing body require you to have a qualification that relates to what you study. For example, if you study accounting and you're working as an IT engineer, you may probably not be able to come use that skilled migration process because they are not related. But yeah. if you study accounting and you're working as an accountant or a tax accountant, of course, that is related. So um, this, is, this does not apply to all occupations. Some occupations have their own requirement, while some occupations are very lenient, some are very stringent, and some also require like you have right documents. Some will require that you have pension or pension pays, pension sleeps for the entire year that you are claiming point for, or some will require that you have tax, some will require pay sleeps, some will require bank statement. So if you don't have some of this missing document, it may not really work 
uh, and yeah. but you need the first process is to identify your occupation every other thing yeah. falls into place so and you can identify multiple occupation you just need to now analyze which one will get you in faster than the other so the other. Um, i think that's the first space of this place to start okay thank you there are so many visas involved too in australia do you want to talk about the visas and so people will know okay if i can come in with this one i can come in with the other one can you share the visa process that people can come in with to australia okay. so australia has over 60 different visa subclass but when it comes to ski migration rather we have yes. two parts so one is the employer sponsored and yeah. one is the um the federal or the state sponsored visa yeah so the employer sponsored is when you get a job and a company or a firm in australia decides to nominate you to move to australia usually for you to get this kind of job you probably need to be really experienced in that job you've done it over time and you have your qualifications to support that as well so you can people get that a lot as well and that one we have for it too which is a temporary work visa and you have one yeah. it's six, which is the skilled and um, permanent residence visa. So that is yeah. for employer sponsor. Uh, but that one is dependent on you getting a job. Then we have the yeah. other part, which is the um, family or state nom or federal nominated visa. Yeah. This one, basically we have three, uh, which is 189, because Australia uses three digit figure for yeah. So you have 189, which is the federal nominated permanent resident visa. So when you get this, the federal federal government has nominated you to come to Australia. The occupations that are on this that can get this kind of visa, not all occupations can get this visa. For example, the occupation I came in with to Australia does not have is was not on the 189 list, but yeah. it was on 190 and 491. So the other two visas, apart from the 189, is 190 visa and 491 visa. So 190 is state nominated permanent resident visa while 491 is a state nominated temporary work visa so yeah. you can choose any of these three occupations but that that is based the why you can go for either of this um, visa will be determined by your occupation the total point that you have at, at that point when you have been nominated because that will determine um, if you can get that. For example, if you are going for 189, which is the federal nominated visa, you need to have 65 points on your own. So if you don't have 65 points on your own, or you cannot get there, there is no way you get that visa. For 190, you need to have at least 60 points of your own that you have gathered based on your own credential, your qualification, your age, your experience, everything. You need 60. Then you can get additional five points from the state. But for 491, which is the work visa, it's that one is um five years visa but you also need to have um 50 if you have 50 on your own then you get an additional 15 point because the minimum requirement for everybody or for any of the three visas is 65 points so if you don't have 65 points so if you have less than that you need to start looking for ways to increase your point if you need to take an additional um, english test get a better score or you, of course you can't change your age which is the only thing you of course. what you can if your partner has not assessed you can get your partner to get to write english test or do an assessment to get more points so there are other ways through which you can improve your score however um those three visas are the options that you have that you can go for so um breaking it down now the three visa i will start with 491 which is the work visa this is very common this is what most people are going for because it's easier Actually, if yes. you have lower point, it's easier. This is a five-year visa. You have Medicare, which is the medical um, system like we have in the UK, like NHS. You have Medicare in Australia. That means you, your health care is taken care of. You can get a private insurance as well, health insurance to add to it, but at least your basic medic medical stuff is covered. You can work in any uh, industry or any sector. The only place you'll probably not be able to work because you are not a, a citizen which is applicable to almost everybody as well. It's maybe some federal government jobs. So, um, but for every other jobs you can do, whatever you decide to do where you land, you can do that. That visa is five years. After you have lived in, but the only thing is that you can not live in Sydney, Melbourne, or Brisbane for the entire duration of your visa. 
You can live in any of the other areas. That doesn't mean you cannot travel to those cities. You can go there and just flex and come back, but you cannot live or work or study there. You can work in the regional areas of Australia, which gives you about, we have eight states in Australia and only three locations are out of, out of that visa. Fantastic option for you. Um, after three years, you'll be eligible for permanent residence. After you have lived in a regional area, I have made 53,900 for three years. Every year, if I made that amount, which is very easy, people are making much more than that. You can make that amount. If you have done that for three years, you are eligible for permanent residence. So you apply for your permanent residence and you get that. For 190, which is straight permanent residence, people get that as well from Nigeria or from anywhere in the world. Which is, the process has been easier. And thankfully, even this government is much more inclined towards migration than the previous yeah. one. So um, I'm not a political analyst, but we've seen the trend <laughs> and it's much more better yeah. than the last um, few years. So 190 is also is something you can get as well based on your occupation. If you have up to 60 points, you get an additional five points from the state. So you get that as well. And you, that means you're a permanent resident. You only need to live in Australia for four years. And you can apply for citizenship as well. Same with 189. Uh, but the 190, which is the state sponsored, requires you to live in that state for at least two years. Um, that is usually a moral obligation because you sign that you want to live there. Um, but you don't necessarily have to, but most people usually do that as well. So um, you can as well do that. So you only need to live there for two years in that state. You can live after that. Um, but you are permanent resident, that you can live anywhere in Australia. So there is no restriction to 189 or 190. Uh, those are the three visas that you have option. Um, if you are going for the skilled nomination for the employer sponsored, if you get a job, your employer will give you those options. Is that they will nominate you for 48, which is the work visa, or 186, which is the permanent um, visa as well. So that will also determine, it's also based on the occupation that you are coming in with if it's employer sponsored. So those are the five major visa that you can come in with. There are other options like student visa, visiting visa, and all other visa. But those are the five major ones that people go with, or people can come in, in especially if you are coming from Nigeria um, to Australia. Do we require English tests for this skilled migration visa? And if yes, what are the English tests that one can write to? Because <laughs> okay. I know yeah, a lot of people want smiling. to know. I have gotten that question a lot every time people, yes. I think maybe people have been burnt with uh, their experience writing English tests and they are tired. <laughs> so people are just looking for opportunity not to write English tests. But yes. um, unfortunately, you, you need English tests to, to use the process or to go come through this process. Uh, okay. Except if you have a UK passport or you have a US passport or Canada passport or a New Zealand passport, that is the only exception that you have. Um, if you don't have any of those passports, if you are still holding a green passport, a Nigerian passport, you would have to uh, write English tests. Of course, there are several options that you can write, uh, which and is not restricted. So you can write IELTS, academic or general is acceptable. You can write uh, Pearson test of English, PTE. You can write that as well um you can write um cambridge you have cambridge option you have oet so we have those four options there is another one as well i think tofu as well there is tofu so five so you have five options that you can choose from um commonly people write IELTS and pt those are the major ones that are really really common um pt is in my own opinion pt is a bit flexible like you can get a very high school if you're um, pronunciations, if the way you speak it's much more better than the way I speak, of course you can get <laughs> 20 points, which is what you would need to get a higher point. Um, but AI out as well is very good. And the other thing you also need to look out for is the requirement of your assessing body. So for example, if you're an accountant, your assessing authority does not take AI out um, general, they only take AI out academic or you write PT. So if you write general, they will not take that. If you are, which other occupation? Um, Engineers Australia, they take IELTS general academic, whichever way you present. Um, yeah, but if, I think accountant, yeah, you need IELTS academic. If you are a teacher and you want to access with the um, Australian Institute of Teaching, 
um, you need to have IELT Academy. They even have specific scores that you need as well. So sometimes the English test you take is determined by your assessing authority or your occupation. If yeah. your occupation assessing authority does not have a requirement for English, then you can take any one that you want. So for example, mine, I did PTE, uh, which is Pearson Test of English, and I got um, about 79 points, which is 20 points from that, because you need, so each of them have different requirements. And the best wow. part is you can write it multiple times. I wrote yeah. mine four times because I needed a high score. I was getting the normal 10 points every time I write yeah. it, but I needed 20 points because my occupation, the point was increased a bit when, it, when my result was ready. Um, I needed to keep writing it because I could not update my age. My age cannot change. My status, <laughs> uh, nothing can change. The only thing that could change for me that could get me it's more English. was write English test. Yeah. test. So I kept on writing it till I got um, a higher uh, band, which is what you need. So in Australia, there are about five English level or English language level. So we have the functional English. We have the vocational English. We have the competent. We have the proficient and the superior. All these are points and they have different requirements. So breaking it down, if you are coming as a skilled migration, the least you should be having is competent English, which is, for example, I'll use IELTS and PT, for example. IELTS, you need to have at least 6.5 in each of the band. This is one way where Australia is different from, for example, Canada. In Canada, you can have eight, eight, maybe nine, and have 6.5 somewhere or seven somewhere. You get point for for each of those um, band. Yeah. But in Australia, Australia works with your least score. So if you have nine 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 and you have six point five, that is zero points, unfortunately. But if you have nine nine and you have seven seven in other two bands, you get um, ten point. So Australia works with your least score. So least score in IELTS, if it's less than seven, which is zero point. If it's less than um eight and it's between eight seven and seven point five it is ten points if you get anything above eight in each of the bands so if you have nine nine eight eight that is 20 points so yeah. if you usually go for IELTS if they need maybe something if your occupation is very easy um the occupation that are really that you don't need much uh, or you don't really require a lot of english but of course if you get higher points in english it gives you more opportunity to be nominated faster um, yeah. So you need to understand the requirement um, for your occupation and go for the English test that suits you best. You can even try, give, do trial or mock exams that they call it and see which one you think will get you a better score and go for it. The most important thing is getting a better score because as yeah. I can tell you, as you're listening to this, there are other countries that are also having similar stuff like this and are trying to move to Australia. And so now the competition has increased compared to when we started four years ago. Yeah. The, the number of people trying to come in now has increased. So you need to get a higher point to at least um, give yourself a much more needed edge over other people. Your spouse does not need to take English if you have enough point on your own. If you are if you're married, you can get your spouse to take English test so that they give you an extra five points. So it, it just depends on your point. I do those point assessment or profile assessment for people. So if it's something you're interested in, you can reach out to us as well, reach out to me directly. Um, I'm happy to do that uh, for people. And we can tell you all the processes that you need, the English test you require, cost and stuff like that. So you get to know all those details as well. Okay, so I'm going to be leaving his email address in my description box so you can contact him and you take it from there as well. This is very nice of you. Um, what we'll do is I'm going to make this video because I don't want this video to be so long. I'm going to stop this video here. So we'll have uh, part two. So we'll also allow our audience to go back and digest all this that you have mentioned here. And we will see them in the next part. So guys, this is the end of this video here. Uh, watch out for part two with me and ATM. I'll be dropping it soon and you would hear the remaining question and answers and how you can migrate to Australia. Thank you guys for watching this video. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so and share this video to your friends and family. I'll see you guys in my next video.